What's going on you guys and welcome back to the A-Ray Show. In this video, we're going to be going over the recent report from the CPI, aka the Consumer Price Index, where basically it's just a measure of measuring inflation. So of course, the big major headline news is that CPI raised about or rised about 1.2% in March, which is pretty terrible. It's not that great. And in fact, we are about 8.5% up in the past year in inflation, which is terrible. But in this video, we're going to be debunking this headline and actually talking about why we're not in that bad of a place as the headline suggests. So if you guys want to see my thoughts and opinions about this recent CPI report, then you guys already know what comes next. Cue that intro. So let's start my theory off by this one simple saying, when things go up, they must come down. So if you guys think about pump and dumps, usually they go up like crazy and they go back down. If you guys think about some of your stocks, they go up and they go down. Of course, there are some exceptions out there, but with inflation, usually it will go up and then eventually it will go down. The good thing is we have other factors working with us, like the Fed, for example, increasing interest rates. But that's neither nor here or there, but at the end of the day, I believe that CPI is kind of getting to that point where it's at the very high point and is starting to trickle down. And I know that this report is basically a recent all time high where we're sitting at eight and a half percent. I mean, that's absolutely ridiculous. That's about two to three times what you would see from a normal year. And of course, we've had a bunch of different factors from the recent war, supply chain shortages, the whole pandemic and whatnot. But I do think this is coming to an end. And in this video, we're going to be explaining exactly why that is. All right. So let's start this off by acknowledging one important factor with the CPI report. So the CPI report that was released this month in April actually reflects data back in March. So what happened in March that's really significant? Well, that's the price of oil just skyrocketed. I mean, we're seeing tons of memes. If you were in Instagram, Twitter, or pretty much hearing it from all your coworkers, friends, family, Everybody was talking about oil prices being above $4, $4.50, $5. You know, all those memes talking about, I'd rather walk to work, I'd rather bike to work, or, you know, Joe Biden did, did this, and all those type of memes. Well, yeah, that was back in March, and it feels like forever ago. A lot of things have changed since then. I mean, if we go to a pump right now, chances are the prices since then decreased. And that's why I believe that we are going to start seeing a smaller decline when it comes to oil. We're not going to see this giant uptrend. We're going to start to see a downtrend. And yes, oil is not a huge part of the CPI report. And we're going to break it down how much how much percentage it is later on in this video. But nonetheless, it's not a huge part, but it still had a huge reason. I mean, what stands out to you guys in this chart right here? It's energy. I mean... <laughs> it's just absolutely nuts. 32% compared to 8.8%. And remember, the average was 8.5%, the weighted average that is. But nonetheless, yes, oil was insane in the month of March. And that's why I believe that oil is starting to come down. I see it myself going to pumps. I was looking at about $4.59 in March at the all-time highs for me at least. And that's just where I am. It might be different for you guys. But then just recently, the other week, I filled up my gas and it was at $4.39. I drove by again and we were almost down below $4 again. So that's just the changes that I'm noticing personally. Let me know in the comments down below if you guys are noted, noticing this as well. But this is one trend that I st I'm starting to see. But anyways, let's start to break down this chart even more. Okay, so over here, we've got the seasonally adjusted changes from preceding month. So basically, all this is over here is a bunch of different categories where we break down their individual inflation or deflationary terms. As you guys can see right here, we have a bunch of numbers. The lower the number, the better. If it's a negative number, that means it's deflationary and it's actually losing price. So instead of something going up, it's going down, which is a good thing, especially in this inflationary time. If the number is extremely high, that's a terrible thing. So let's start to break this down. Yes, of course, we're looking at energy. And the biggest thing that you guys can see over here is 11, 18, 18, 22. These are all important. This is huge. I mean, remember, once again, our weighted average was 8.5%. So these numbers have a huge, huge, huge implication on the average, the weighted average that is. And that's why inflation this month, at least the month of March, was pretty terrible. And that's because of energy. If we take out energy and food, we're only sitting at 0.3%. That's nothing at all. I mean, 
that's absolutely nothing. If you take that all out, we're only at 6.5%. We are 2% up just because of food and energy. So what's so significant about food and oil? Well, basically, if you guys are paying attention to what's really going on right now, it all has to do with the war with Ukraine and Russia. War, unfortunately, is a huge, huge driver for inflationary pressure, and that's exactly where food and oil gets hit. It's mostly the commodities that go crazy when everything's chaotic when it comes to war, and that's, unfortunately, the time period that we're going through, and that's why prices of food and oil are going up. Russia is getting boycotted with a lot of its food and oil itself, which basically kind of inflates the price just that way because there's less supply, you know, supply and demand. So with that being said, you know, this is a bad time. But the good news is this is not going to last forever. Hopefully, I mean, you never want war to last forever. And usually as so far right now, it's never lasted forever. But with that being said, this will one day subside. Not only will the war subside, but also supply chain shortages will go away. On top of that, things like the lockdowns in China and Shanghai will go away. And this these are all deflationary pressures because all of those are inflationary pressures. And when those go away, inflation will go down. So again, yes, we are at 6.5% for the past year, but only 0.3% for the month of March, which is actually a decrease from the all time from the recent high. So as you guys can see in October, 0 0.6, 0 0.5 in November, 0 0.6 again in December, and then slowly we're starting to come down. It's not just all of those. We're starting to see it in used car vehicles as well. I mean, remember when everyone was kind of worried about used cars we were going up really high but now we're starting to get into the negative territory so the prices of used cars are going down the prices of real estate are actually going down because of the interest rate hikes so there's that i mean there are some categories where things are going up for example transportation but that could also be have to do with you know people getting a little bit more comfortable with the whole covid thing and traveling a little bit more so you know companies can kind of see this as a time to kind of jack up the prices but you know that's neither nor here or there but nonetheless it is what it is um, we're starting to see a lot of decreases especially deflationary pressures in some categories oil and food yeah that's going to be here as long as the war in russia and ukraine are going on but at the end of the day, that's going to end one day, hopefully, fingers crossed. And as soon as that happens, I can see a bigger trend, uh, downtrend starting to form. So yes, the prices of food and oil are going up. But at the end of the day, they're going to start going down. I mean, I've already started to see it again. You know, this month of April, I've started to see it go down. So hopefully when the next CPI report comes out on May 11th, we will start to see an even bigger downtrend. If you guys do a lot of technical analysis, you guys know that if it dips just a little bit, you have to be a little patient. Make sure you're, it's dipping a little bit more or if it goes back up. So this could be kind of that same situation. We don't really know what's going to happen in April, May, June, July. But at this point where it stands today, and it's, as the recording of this video, I kind of see these things going down. Oil was a huge thing. I mean, we went up dang near 32% from the previous slide. I mean, that was terrible. Let's see if I can pull it up. We were at 32% up. That's not going to happen again. It's not going to be two consecutive months of back-to-back 32% -back gains. In fact, I believe that we're going to start to see that negative decrease. So yes, CPI was at 8.5% for the past year and it rose 1.2% in March. But I actually think that we're going to start to see an inflection point this month of April. Maybe it could be one month too early. Maybe it could be a month later. Who really knows at this point? I mean, we're just going to have to wait till May 11th. But in my opinion, I think that we're going to start getting closer and closer to that period. We're going to start seeing that inflection point. So let me know in the comments down below what you guys think of this video. And let me know if you guys think that we're going to start seeing even more inflation or if we're going to start getting closer and closer to a deflationary time period. So with that being said, that's pretty much it for this video. Thank you guys for watching. Please leave a like, comment, subscribe. It means a lot to me. And with that being said, peace out, guys.